let me introduce you to a, a new plugin for a real-time Compose stability analysis. So this plugin has a bunch of different features, but uh, these four are the most important one. First, we have a, a code inspection, which uh, practically displays these uh, color markers in your composables to let you know whether uh, past parameters are considered stable or not. The second one is a Stability Explorer, which is the panel on the right side of your Android Studio that allows you to inspect your whole project and give you a quick overview. The third one is a Recomposition Tracking, so we have a trace recomposition annotation that allows us to track the number of recompositions from our logs, as well as the stability of each past parameter. And the fourth uh, great uh, feature of this uh, plugin is a stability validation, which uh, practically validates the stability of your project and does not allow you to commit to a version control system if it detects a new unstable types, and that prevents uh, all potential issues right on time. Stay tuned if you want to learn more. So what is a stability in Compose anyway? Well, a stability is a way of uh, telling a compiler whether a specific type is uh, safe to skip during recomposition. Stable objects do not uh, trigger unnecessary UI updates, which improves the overall performance. Compose uh, uses this idea to optimize rendering. If an object is uh, stable and it hasn't uh, changed, Compose can uh, safely skip uh, recomposing any composables that depend on it. But what kind of a data type is considered stable to begin with? In Compose, a type like a class, data class or object is considered stable when its fields do not change unexpectedly, and in most cases they are defined using the vol keyword, then when it has a well-defined equals implementation, a data class by default already generates this equals function for you, and it's considered stable if it contains other stable types. In most cases, Kotlin and the Java primitive types are already treated as stable by default, including int, long, float, double and other. So, if you pass uh, stable parameters to a composable function and the values uh, haven't changed, then a composable will uh, skip recomposition, the UI will uh, stay efficient, and the less uh, CP work is uh, done in overall. However, if you pass an uh, unstable parameter on the other hand, a compose cannot uh, guarantee that they haven't changed. So, even if they are identical, a compose uh, must recompose every time and perform more work than it's needed. So, in this video, I'm not going to go too deeper into the topic about uh, Compose stability. I'm going to focus more on this uh, new plugin which uh, is now available. The link of this uh, plugin will be down in the video description. And also now, let me show you how you can uh, set up your project and enable this uh, plugin. So, the first uh, thing that you need to do is to uh, get this uh, plugin from your Android Studio. So, we can open up the settings, then the plugins, and search for, uh, for a uh, Compose Stability Analyzer, right? So, just be sure to install this uh, plugin, and then we need to also include uh, this plugin in our version catalog file. So, there it is. That's the actual plugin which I have added uh, in this case. I'm using the version 0.6.0. After you include this uh, plugin in your uh, version catalog file, then you also need to open up a, a project level gradable file, include that uh, plugin there as uh, well, as well as in uh, all other uh, modules of your project that you want to. So in this case, I have uh, added this um, plugin in uh, only one of my modules uh, for the demonstration, but nevertheless. So after you include that uh, gradle build plugin, you can open up this uh, explorer uh, from the right side, and then you can hit this uh, refresh icon. Here in this uh, actual panel, uh, you will notice uh, all these kind of uh, different modules that uh, had uh, that uh, plugin installed, right? So at this point, I already have it in my edit uh, module, but previously I have included it in this uh, dashboard and my compose app module as well. Nevertheless, it will scan our uh, whole module and then it will display uh, what kind of um, composables have uh, unstable parameters, right? So this uh, green uh, kind of uh, indicator indicates that uh, your uh, parameters are uh, stable. These uh, yellowish uh, indicators uh, indicate that uh, your uh, parameters are uh, unstable or uh, non-skippable. And there is also a, a third uh, red indicator, which uh, definitely indicates that uh, your parameter is uh, unstable. So the main difference between the red and the yellow is that the yellow uh, is uh, calculated at a runtime. So the stability cannot be uh, calculated at a compile time and uh, only at the runtime. And uh, even if you are having a couple of these uh, yellow indicators, it doesn't mean that your project uh, is uh, bad, right? But nonetheless, let me here uh, find uh, some of those uh, unstable uh, composables so that uh, I can open them up and... Uh, Check them out in more details. So in this case, we have one uh, red uh, indicator. So let's open up this accessory card. Let's close this dialog. So this is a, a custom user object, which uh, I have created uh, purposely for a demonstration, right? And here we also have one uh, yellow that says accessory item. 
if we uh, drag our mouse cursor, we can see this uh, uh, toggle or uh, a more detailed information saying that the runtime stability parameter accessory of uh, this type has a stability that will be determined at the runtime. So this may prevent compile time optimizations. So if we check the actual definition of this accessory item, we will notice that this is uh, an actual interface. And by default, all interfaces are uh, considered unstable even though the implementations of this uh, interface are actually stable. So we can check down below and see that the implementation is an enum class, and enum class is uh, stable by default. In this specific scenario, we can easily mark our uh, interface class here with a stable annotation, because we are sure that uh, this uh, interface is indeed stable. However, if you are unsure that uh, the implementation classes of this interface are stable, then you should be really careful when uh, using this kind of uh, annotation. Because with this, you are basically telling a compiler that uh, you are 100% sure that this uh, actual uh, type is indeed stable. And if it's not, then uh, you might see some kind of uh, inconsistency in your application during the recomposition. But in this case, I'm already sure that this uh, interface is stable. And since I have marked it with a stable annotation, now it's considered stable here as well. On the other hand, here we also have a custom user uh, object, which is uh, considered uh, unstable. So here we can see that... Uh, uh, when we move our mouse cursor over this uh, red or uh, orange indicator, it says that this uh, class or this object contains uh, one immutable uh, var property. And by default, all these uh, properties declared with a var keyword are considered unstable. Unless we define this actual variable or wrap this variable in a mutable state or a composed state, right? So if we call here a mutable state of, and then we create a composed state that can be tracked uh, by the composed uh, compiler, then and only then uh, this class could be considered as a stable, right? But even in that case, you should be also careful when uh, adding this uh, annotation as well, right? So in this case, now all these kind of uh, parameters are marked as a stable. But like I said, even if uh, some of those parameters are actually marked uh, with a yellow color, it doesn't mean that uh, your uh, code is uh, bad or uh, it affects your performance uh, that much, right? Now, the next uh, thing which I want to show you here is this uh, trace uh, recomposition annotation. So this annotation will allow us to enable a runtime recomposition tracing for this specific composable function, which we have annotated with this annotation. And when we apply this uh, to a composable function, the compiler plugin will uh, inject the code to track the recomposition count, the parameter changes, and the unstable parameters. So this uh, accessory card in this specific uh, project is used in, say, the lazy row, right? And uh, by the nature, these kind of uh, components are uh, recomposed quite often. This uh, trace recomposition uh, shouldn't be used on uh, all different kind of uh, composable functions, instead only on uh, those composables that are uh, recomposing frequently, like components in the lazy column, right? So this uh, trace recomposition annotation accepts uh, two parameters. The first one is a, a tag, which is the string value that will appear in uh, our logs, so that we can track that uh, log uh, more easily. And the second parameter is the threshold. So the threshold basically a uh, log after this uh, many recompositions and a default value is a uh, one. But for example, if we expect that uh, these kind of uh, composable functions will always render at least once or twice, we can set here the threshold to, for example, three. And then this uh, log for the recomposition will trigger only after that uh, third uh, threshold. But nonetheless, now I'm going to show you here and actually run this application to show you how these kind of uh, information are uh, logged in our locket. So let's run this app, open up the locket. So when I open up my application and open up that uh, screen which contains a lazy row uh, that displays these kind of accessory cards which we have marked with a trace recomposition annotation, we will be able to see here in the logs uh, how many times the recomposition has occurred for that specific uh, trace recomposition tag called accessory card. Right? So here it is. In this case, uh, the recomposition happened uh, 22 times, and that is normal because here we have a bunch of different uh, lazy rows, and uh, each lazy row contains uh, many other elements uh, inside it. So if we try to scroll this uh, lazy row, you will notice that uh, many more uh, recompositions will occur, which is normal since we have uh, multiple different uh, items in this lazy row. But nevertheless, let's just here inspect this kind of information in more details. So each recomposition uh, tag or uh, Composable here will also display all its parameters. So we have that uh, custom user, we have the accessory item, uh, this uh, boolean value, and the lambda as well. So for each and every parameter, we can see uh, whether it's uh, changed, whether it's uh, stable. So in this case, we can see uh, from which value to which value the value uh, the parameter has changed. So in those cases, uh, we can see the actual image that was uh, changed while we were scrolling through our lazy row. So from this pirate here to the regular head from the regular head to the center head, because uh, that's the actual uh, 
images that we have in this uh, lazy row for this accessory card, right? But like I said, uh, you shouldn't uh, use this uh, trace recomposition for all your composable functions, only for those uh, components that uh, actually have some kind of uh, performance issues so that you can inspect them in more details and uh, see uh, what's going on behind the scenes. In the documentation of this uh, plugin, we can also see uh, some kind of uh, best practices uh, as well. So they explicitly say that we shouldn't track everything. So only composables that we suspect that they have uh, performance issues. Then for the list items, which uh, do recompose uh, frequently, and for the complex screens with uh, many parameters. Now this plugin also offers a bunch of different features and uh, it's uh, really helpful. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, obviously. But uh, all I can say is that uh, this uh, plugin is uh, really helpful. So I like uh, these uh, color markers that uh, are easily tracked. We also have this explorer panel that allows us to easily access all our composables and uh, check them in more details to see uh, what kind of uh, parameters are unstable and uh, which parameters require our attention. The integration of this uh, plugin is also really simple. So uh, be sure to rate uh, this actual uh, plugin and uh, give it a star on uh, GitHub. If you like it, of course. And uh, don't forget to comment down below. Let me know uh, your thoughts about this uh, a new plugin and whether you are thinking of uh, integrating it in your project and maybe improve the performance of your app uh, along with it. So drop a like if uh, you like this kind of a content and if you want to see some more interesting uh, tips and tricks. Other than that, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one.